Aloha, welcome back to Aina Bear Farm. We've got a really cool field trip for you guys today. Uh, we're here in the Hamako region of the Big Island at about 2,300 feet of the Aina Forest Restoration Project. So I'm going to introduce my wife, Jeanette Sue Lutis. Uh, who works with the Hamakua Youth Foundation. She's going to tell us all about our, our uh, gracious hosts here who are going to show us around today. series Malka to Makai where we learn a little bit about all the different parts of Hamakua that make this place special. So with me today we have the Higginses. Diane is a board member and they have welcomed us to their place to show us what it looks like to reforest pasture land. So Diane can you tell us a little bit about you know when you started it and why reforestation is so important? Well, you know, I got the idea when I got a mailer from the, um, actually it was NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service, in 2012, when they were talking about the importance of taking pasture land back and um, planting native trees, shrubs, vines to help the environment. And I was just really interested in that. So I started the paperwork and actually we started our first planting So, can you tell us a little bit about why um, why you decided it was so important to plant native trees? Well, I, I had to learn. I wasn't really sure in the beginning, you know, why should I do that? But I knew that our planet needed some help. And um, when I looked into it, I found out that native trees don't require as much water or fertilizer um, or pesticides and that they helped act like a sponge on Earth. There's a little right behind here, a little river when it rains. And now I know that our soil will, will stay here, won't go down to the ocean, it won't affect the coral reefs. So that's, that's, that's awesome. why. So planting native trees helped to, to solve a design problem of erosion and it does it in a way that actually helps the environment. So we're going to go on to our first of a few stops where we're going to look at some really cool trees that they've planted and they're going to tell us a little bit more about what they've done. area we wanted to share is are the first trees that we planted and they are the koa trees so you can see how big they've grown in a matter of eight years and koa is used mostly for furniture in Hawaii and it's one of the prized trees along with ohia which is right here this is an ohia tree these two and then if we kind of swing around, I'm going to show you there are some more ohia trees, bigger one and the smaller one. And this here is a koaia tree, which is related to the koa. And we were told when we planted the koaia, it would be good if we could plant an iliahi or a sandalwood next to it. So if you look right here, you can see This is the sandalwood, and there's the koaia. And what they do when they start growing, the roots um, communicate with each other, and the roots from one tree help the roots of the other tree. So we found that in some cases, one tree will die and only one will be left. But here, they're both growing together. 
this beautiful bush is called um, Alahe'e. And the wood is used, the wood is hard and it was used by the Hawaiians to make tools. Over here we have the Aali'i, which um, the leaves have a sticky varnish like uh, covering and the seeds are used for lay making and, and dye. And the plant was used for um, medicine. Here's a close up of the seeds that are used in lay making. Beautiful. This is a kukui nut tree, and you may have seen um, they use the kukui nuts to make a kukui nut lay. This is what the kukui nut looks like. Um, and it's inside this big thing, <laughs> shell. And this is what it looks like when it's still on the tree. I just picked these up from the ground. Here's one that's kind of a whitish color. So they're used for to make kukui nut lays. And then the ancient Hawaiians also used the oil from the kukui nut to make um, like a little lantern and they would put a wick in the oil to light. So it has a lot of significance um, as, as symbolic um, giving of light. So the kukui nut trees are very happy. They grow very big. This is a beautiful ohia tree and you can see how pretty the blossoms are. They come in red, yellow, rust color, and I think there may be some white ones too. And they're used mostly in hakules, and hula dancers like to use them um, when they're making the hakule for the head. But one thing that they're threatened by now is called rapid ohia death. And the way the, the fungus gets into the ohia tree is through a cut so if there's a cut, the, the spores kind of go in there and it can kill a tree and it's very widespread throughout our state. So it's something to be aware of. And if you have ohia trees, don't nick it with your lawnmower or let animals chew on the bark because it could get rapid ohia death. Okay, here we have a lolu plant which is a native palm. And these were just planted um, December 2019. So you, you get an idea, they're kind of slow growing. And right next to it, we have a hapu fern. And um, this was probably taken from our yard and transplanted here. This tree is called a papalake pau and it has sticky fruits right here. And they were used to catch the native birds for colorful cloaks and helmets that were used for the Royal High Chiefs. So if you stick your finger in there, you can feel the stickiness. This is the Mauhau Hele plant. And it's actually um, the beautiful hibiscus bloom is our state flower. And if you wonder about the name and you think of the word heli, do you think of the heli on bus? Because this plant just spreads out and it keeps moving, just like the heli on bus. <laughs> this is a colea bush. And it's very plentiful. If you go up in the Kalapa State Park, you see a lot of Kalea up there. You can tell because it has a, the pink leaves on the top. Um, the red sap was used for dyeing kapa or tapa cloth. And the logs were used for beading the kapa. This is a mamaki plant. You're probably familiar with the leaves because the leaves are used to make tea, um, mamaki tea. The fruit, I don't see any fruit on this, but the fruit is used as a laxative. And um, kappa is made from the bark. And it also is a host to the 
Kamehameha butterfly. So this is a really important plant. wrap up our trip around our native tree project I just wanted to share how grateful we are um, to have an opportunity to actually do this and we hope over time um, this will be a legacy for our family for our children and our grandchildren and actually it's influenced them already in their career choices so um, I think it's really important for children and adults to learn about what they can do to help the earth in any way they can so this is our way all right well thank you so much for hosting us this is a beautiful uh beautiful piece of property a beautiful thing you guys are doing and uh i know i learned a lot i hope everybody out there watching learned some cool things join us next time at ida bear farm aloha, aloha. aloha. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.